Hello, my name is Alan. The topic of my night talk is the threat of Mount Meeting Volcano to Lilluit River Valley. One of the greatest threats to the volcano is landslide. So, the goal of my night talk today is to use Lilluit River Valley as an example to illustrate the risk and hazard from large landslides from volcano in general. Also, I will explain the method that they use to assess the risk of landslide and Canadian land use policies. Now I'm going to talk about the background of Mount Mega Volcano and Lilluit River Valley. Mount Mega Volcano is located in southwest British Columbia and is about 150 kilometers north from Vancouver. The last eruption of the volcano occurred about 2,350 years ago. Hence, this is an active volcano because the last eruption happened within the past 10,000 years. The three main impacts of landslide from Mount Mega on Lilluit River Valley are direct cause of death, negative impact on fish populations, and socio-economic and environmental effects. The range of annual landslide risk to an individual residing in Lilluit River Valley is 5 times 10 to negative 6 to 5 times 10 to the negative 4. Although the number seems really, really small, when we compare it to the standard level, we can see the range of annual landslide risk to individual in Lilluit River Valley is up to five times higher than the standard values that is used by North Vancouver and some other big countries like Australia, Hong Kong, and England. The second influence is the negative impact on fish population. Landslide affect the water level of Lilluit River and a lot of endangered species are very susceptible to environmental changes. Here is a list of some of the endangered species in Lilluit River. This graph shows the water level before and after a recent landslide occurred in Mount Mega Volcano in 2010. We can see the water level goes up and down a lot during landslide, and many species have gone endangered because of the fluctuating water level. The third influence is the socio-economic and environmental effects. Landslide lead to destruction of bridges and roads, and also loss of trees. I will use the same example landslide occurred in 2010. These two pictures were taken after the landslide and we can see a large area of tree had been destroyed. And the total cost associated with the landslide was more than 10 million Canadian dollars. Quantitative risk assessment is a method that people use to assess how safe a place is from landslide. The three characteristics of the assessment is that it is transparent, systematic, and reproducible. And there are three main associated protocols. The three main protocols are developing an inventory of landslide hazards, quantifying the probability and consequences of landslide occurrence determining whether or not stockholders find this estimated risk acceptable. And there are also three main policies that govern residential development. Since the Local Government Act and the Community Charter are pretty similar to the Land Title Act, I will mainly talk about the Land Title Act. The main point of Land Title Act is saying that the proving officer can refuse to approve the development of subdivision or if the officer has any doubts, he or she can request a professional engineer to clarify that the land may be used safely for the use intended. The first criticism of Land Title Act is that there is no designation of a geotechnical engineer, so any kind of engineer can claim that they have the professional knowledge to write a report that the proving officer requested. The second criticism of Land Title Act is that the word safely is not well defined. The approving officer can only judge whether the development of subdivisions is safe by self-interpretation and that could create conflict. My suggestions are that it could be stated clearly in Land Title Act what kind of engineer are qualified to write the report and should develop curriculum of quantified assessment in order to define safe in Land Title Act. As mentioned in the previous slide, individual risk in Lilluit River Valley is higher than acceptable levels, and this is only the tip of the iceberg. The government should change the policy as soon as possible so that people can take less risk for living. And here is the resource. 
So if you are interested in this topic, you can look him up to find out more information about um, Miguel Vicano. And this is the end of my presentation. Thank you.